Good afternoon, folks. It's that time again. It's time for a trail ride with Canadian Can-Am. Stay tuned and enjoy the show as we take the trail ride into the trails of Beaverbank, Nova Scotia. So hi everybody, it's uh, Sunday, August 24th, and uh, we decided to go for a ride on the ATVs today, just to check out the trails. I have a partner in crime with me today, he was wanting to go for a ride as well, just uh, upgraded to a new machine, so he wanted to give her a whirl on the new wood roads and break it in. So uh, we agreed to go for a nice little ride on Sunday. and. Uh, just enjoy the day in the fresh air. And the weather was a little bit cool, but it was a beautiful sunny day. And as you can see from the road here, uh, the road's been really upgraded here where we normally start off, but that's because they're building a wind farm. But uh, we're going to get off this road real quick and uh, get up the power line, continue enjoying the enjoying the ride. So from now on, uh, every now and again, I'm going to jump on the on here and give a little commentary what's going on but for the most part we're just going to sit back relax and enjoy the ride as we are cruising around the trails on, uh, on that day. So the plan for today was to uh, ride basically the woods roads uh, in around the Beaverbank area. We were going to leave uh, North Beaverbank and uh, take the trails up along the power line and work our way up uh, towards Jim Horn Lake and then uh, work our way up through uh, the east side of McGrath Lake up through to Story Lake and uh, have a few breaks along the way and then uh, we we're going to cut across the Cavanaugh Road and take work our way towards the Riverland campground and then just uh, do the loop back around back towards uh, back towards North Beaver Bank coming back through the Redenfrew Road and that such. One thing that did surprise us uh, even though we've had a lot of dry weather is that there's been there's a lot of water on the trails. We had lots of puddles and stuff. Uh, for the most part we, we didn't get too wet. Uh, the, a lot of the brooks were low and the river is really low when we get up to Riverland but uh, but for, uh, yeah, we were really surprised with how much water was on the trails. Now nah, we didn't get, we weren't going to go play in the mud. We were just say uh, we were more or less just wanted to go cruising and uh, check out the trails and see uh, see how everything was going. And basically, I was just going to give the bikes a good run uh, for the day. I think we did a grand total of uh, 63 kilometers when it was all said and done. Like I said, it was a beautiful day. I think the temperature when we started off was plus 15 degrees, and so when you started. Uh, Going along there with the bike there, the, it got a little cool, so. But it warmed up to be about 22 after and after lunch, and uh, it worked out really good just to uh, cruise on comfortably with, uh, with a long sleeve t-shirt on and all that good stuff. 
So we're just going to be working our way up the power lines here towards uh, our, the, the usual track I usually take when I do the big loop. And, uh, we'll work our way up to the Granddaddy Hill and uh, then we'll take our follow the power lines up to the turn off to Jim Horn Lake and then we'll just follow the woods roads up through and do a few cut acrosses and such. But, uh, we had a grand time. Uh, uh, lots of fresh air. And so said the weather was awesome. So uh, we really enjoyed ourselves and uh, gave us gave the bikes a good run for a good run for the day. So we're just going to carry on up the power lines here and we'll uh, enjoy the ride and the scenery. So I'm trying not to. We didn't see any wildlife. Uh, it's just a few birds flitting about in the trail, but. Uh, didn't see very many other bikes too. Granted, it was a it was a Sunday. Yeah, it was a Sunday, not a Saturday. We went. It was Saturday, August 24th. Now I'm, I got to correct that already. So uh, sit back and back and relax, enjoy, and, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you get to enjoy the experience as we did when we were doing the trails. So coming up here is one of the spots I usually like to just stop and look. It's a, I find it personally, I find it's a really neat spot to stop because you can look down across the valley and see see uh, see a fair distance across and look around and all that good stuff. I just I find it just a unique spot to stop and and uh, so we just we just haul up here and we we'll have a brief discussion. I'm usually just waiting for my partner to catch up here and then uh, we'll carry on but I enjoy, always enjoy it here because I get to look across the valley and it's nice and scenic especially when you can see in the distance like this on a nice fine day like it is so we'll just carry on and then get around the trails again and we'll get up to Granddaddy Hill it's a lovely day in the countryside <laughs> huh?
come up here now to uh, Granddaddy Hill. And we're going to stop here for another break and just uh, take our time as we're doing the trails. But uh, once again, uh, one of our one another nice spot to just kind of stop and take a quick break is at the Granddaddy Hill site. And so we're going to stop here and have a quick break, and then uh, before long, we're back on the trails again and back up the continuing on up the power lines. Won't be too much longer now. We'll be uh, Veering off the power lines, and uh, we're taking the wood roads up towards uh, Jim Horn Lake. So I'm coming up to this puddle here again, and I hate it for some reason. I don't know, just a personal thing. I hate but uh, I hate. I really don't really enjoy going through this one for some reason. I always either seem to get stuck or always get close to being stuck. For some reason, I managed to make it through okay today. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those weird puddles that uh, just doesn't seem to go my way for some reason. So we're almost coming up to the turn here now that will take us across country again, back over towards uh, back over towards the other set of power lines, which we can carry on up towards. Uh, Jim Horn Lake, so, yeah, it's one of those things that, uh, one of those personal preference things that uh, I don't usually like, but it's part of the game of ATV, and at no point did I actually have to put the bike in 4 degree, uh, in low or 4x4, four four. we did it all in, all in uh, high gear, and we, and neither one of us ever put the bike in, uh, in four-wheel drive today, which worked out really good, and so, I mean, basically we're driving wood road, so it should have been really good, but. Yeah, that puddle back there, that just, uh, for some reason, I don't have much luck with it. So, we're going to keep on trucking, and uh, won't be long before we're up towards uh, Jim Horn Lake.
as I look off to the right here, this is the Jim Horn Lake on the right hand side. And you see it through the trees there every so often through a clearing through the trees. But uh, there's a Jim Horn Lake, and uh, this is the woods road that goes up the west side of it. And, uh, over on the other side there, so there's the lake there. And so over on the other side there, you can uh, there's a cabin over there, which is uh, very popular to stop in winter time when, uh, when the, the trails are a lot better shape for uh, travel. Or, uh, across the ponds and bogs and stuff. So that was Jim Horn Lake. Keep on carrying up the trail here up now towards uh, Story Lake. trail back there through the woods right right there that's the takes you up to that takes you into that north end of that Wayland Lake down to that little cat little spot there yeah it's a beautiful little spot but uh, that's where you come up right there I was looking for it I was trying to mark it <laughs> So another spot I like uh, stopping at here is this, this little bridge that covers the brook. But uh, last time I was through here, I didn't realize that the uh, beaver had been so busy. So uh, yeah, the last time I was here, the, there was no beaver dams. Now they got a double layer dam here. So it's pretty neat to see, but uh, that hopefully does undermine the road. But uh, he's been a busy fellow, the little beaver has. Holy fuck. That wasn't there the other day. So coming up here we have an intersection. Uh, if you go right and continue on this main road you head out towards Rocky Lake. Rocky Lake Drive or whatever the heck they call it and if you go left here this is a trail that takes you up towards McGrath Lake and we're going to head up towards McGrath Lake do the little cut through and then next thing you know we're on the east side of McGrath Lake and then we're next thing you know we're up to Story Lake and uh, that's where we're going to stop and have a bite to eat. Want to stop it down on the other side and nobody's at the cabin we can have a bite to eat down there. <laughs>
gate's usually locked, so somebody must be down to that spot, so. Huh? Oh, I know. Well, down here, there's going to be a clearing. There's a trailer that goes down to the right. Come ahead down. If there's nobody down there, well, it's a nice spot in the lake, so. There's somebody down there, they're going to have to go to this. <laughs> And welcome to Story Lake. Uh, come down here and see that nobody's here at the cabin. So uh, since nobody's here, we're going to take advantage of the the nice locale and we're going to have a bite to eat. So uh, I'm going to shut down the camera now for a bit. And uh, once we're all done, we'll hit back the trails. I think the next time I come back on, I think we're, uh, we're actually on the Kavanaugh Trail. But uh, yeah, time for, time for a snack, a good snack. So we'll see you after the snack break. I was hoping nobody was home. <laughs> so here we are on the Kavanaugh Trail. So we're not very far away from uh, from uh, Story Lake here. We don't pay the game out of a kilometer and a half, two kilometers after having our lunch break. And uh, instead of taking the big loop out to the left towards, uh, back up towards Renfrew and then cutting across the other trail, I hadn't been through here, so, and I didn't know what the trail was like. So I, I've never done this unless do, I'm with, I want to do this on this with somebody when I'm traveling with uh, somebody with another bike in case I get into trouble. The trail's actually really good. Uh, I never had any problems with it, but uh, with the new trail and I've never been through to it, that's sometimes always good to have that, that, that extra peace of mind in the back of your mind. So this takes us across the, the Kavanaugh Trail, they say, I believe they call it the Kavanaugh Trail, and it takes us back up to the, the old Renfrew Road. And when we pop it on the old Renfrew Road there, you can see a big difference where they're uh, rocking everything in, and uh, 
getting everything ready for it looks like to be another wind farm of some sort, unless they're planning to build a subdivision, but I think it's a wind farm. But uh, that's pretty well it, uh, so we're just going to cruise along this section of the trail. It, uh, it is part of the trail system that is maintained by the uh, Fundy Adventures, I think, or one of that group, the group that's in uh, Hans County that looks after, that's the ATV Club for Hans County. And uh, so it's part of their trail system that they kind of maintain. So uh, follow along, you'll see signs every now and again that show that they're, they're out there uh, making sure that uh, everything's up to snuff. Then we're going to pop out onto uh, the, the, the Rock Road, we're going to take that down, then we're going to head down to the Alex McPhee Memorial Trail, and uh, we'll take another stop down there at the, uh, at the, uh, at the bottom of the lake there, um, and uh, take another break there. So That's our plan for right now. We're going to get a little turned around, but uh, due to all the new roads, because they got roads pushed through that I hadn't seen before, but uh, I'll have to take some day and go back and map that. But uh, for now, we'll just follow this trail along and uh, and uh, get to get to the next uh, stopping point. trails go so most of them dead in I think so huh? yeah we see the open or wider one was the Cavanaugh Road here. Yeah. Oh, but there's all these woods roads, right? 
I think these are more exploratory in winter, I think, than swarm in winter probably better when to get up on top of the bumps, right? Not far away from the old uh, Renfrew Road here now, so. approaching the old Renfrew Road and then imagine our surprise when we popped out here because I was not expecting this. This this is totally different. There's power poles, there's smooth road. I mean you can drive uh, transport trucks up and through here and personal cars and not worry about things. So uh, like I said I don't know if it's being developed for uh, for uh, wind farms but uh, it's a lot of new roads we're going to have to explore and find out what's going on because uh, there's that one road there didn't even, didn't even match up with the map. So, anyway, we're just going to keep on trucking down here to the trail that takes us down to the uh, down to uh, Allen Lake, and we're going to go down and have a have another little stop. So next time we're going to see us, we'll be following down towards Allen Lake. So for those who have watched my previous videos, uh, this trail here is part of the uh, Alex McPhee Memorial Trail. It's a uh, trail that was created by the local ATV group, and it takes you down towards the south end of Allen Lake. And down at the end, south end of Allen Lake, because they got a nice little bench area set up, and, and it's a good spot to stop. I enjoy coming here. It's uh, 
just because it's a nice scenic spot. Uh, the bench helps out uh, for taking a break. And uh, but there's always a nice little breeze blowing off the lake here, so it keeps the bugs off you. It's a it's a nice scenic little spot. It's shaded, so you don't get sunburned. So one of my one of my I usually try and make it down here because it's one of my one of my more favorite spots to, to visit. And not many people come down here, so I really I, it's usually not many people down here. Even though the tracks are more and more people are getting to know it because it's signed. So we stopped there for another break and uh, wasn't long for back on the trail and. Uh, we're heading out the other end of the McPhee, Alexander McPhee Memorial Trail, and we're going to head down towards Riverland Campground. And we're, the reason we're going to head down there is just want to check out the water levels in the river and uh, see how low what they actually got. And, uh, it was, we're, we were really surprised, because like I said earlier, there's a lot of water on the trails, but uh, for some reason the, the, the brooks and the, and, the, and the rivers are really, really low. So we're going to do a little cross-country traveling here. And uh, go through a little few spots and uh, a few tight spots, and then next thing you know, we're down at the Riverland Campground. I think I heard him three.
campground, just head back right out of it. You don't see what the water in the river is like, and it's not that far. So for those who've never been down here, this is the river that uh, goes next to the Riverline Campground. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the camera or not, but uh, we're going to cross the river here. The river is really, really low. Like normally the last time I was down here, uh, you whenever you thought about going across in the bike because the bike would have floated away. That's how high the water was. <laughs> but as you can see, the water is really, really, really low. And uh, we're going to head over to the other side, and this would actually travel the path up any further than we went to actually enter the campground. If you look closely up to the top left of the screen before we turn around, you can actually see uh, one of the campers that belong to the, to the campground. So that's how close we were. We didn't intrude on their property, but uh, you can see it there or not. Uh, probably not. I probably turned away too fast. Anyways, there's a camper right there, and uh, we turned around here because we didn't want to interfere with the go on private property. and. Uh, so uh, it was also a good chance to wash the mud off the off the off the tires of the bike. So here you can just see the campground the trailer there. Now. So uh, yeah, we so we just, just water's really really low. Um, no problem crossing it. And as you see, normally this is normally underwater, and uh, so we just turn around and come out of it, and then we're just gonna head up back up towards the up towards the main road. And uh, to get up to the main road, we're gonna head towards the uh, towards the little bridge that uh, have our next little stop. He's low. <laughs> Last time we came through, you couldn't get through. You would have been floating across there. So. Yeah. All right, we're going to start heading to work our way out. Does it work? <laughs> it's a good way to go yet. <laughs> If you want to go back in through the other way, that that trail, that Alexander Fee Trail, it goes down through here. When we turn left and turn right, it comes back up through that way.
corner. <laughs> Cut the corner. <laughs> oh, are you? We'll go down here and we'll stop a bit again, or? Yeah. battery issues again. I, I think you managed to record the whole trip. Um, we're going to go down here. We're going to stop at the little, uh, little nice spot to get created down here by the bridge. Uh, by that memorial that they got for the young, young fellow. And we're going to stop there and then uh, unfortunately I am unable to record anymore due to the fact that the, the battery did. So I'm going to have to invest in a, another battery. But uh, we have probably another, once we after we stop, we probably had probably another hour and a half before we uh, got back. Uh, grand total, we were gone for almost uh, seven hours that day. I managed to record almost five hours worth of video and uh, managed to knock it down to this nice, uh, well, almost an hour, it was about 50, 59 minutes worth of video that I managed to record or uh, cut it down to. And, uh, Unfortunately, I said I didn't get the rest of the trail, but uh, I've included the map that we uh, that we did take. We did a counterclockwise, or sorry, clockwise loop on the map, and uh, that was our basic run for today. So, grand total, 63 clicks. Beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon, Sunday, August 24th, and uh, we had a we had a lovely time. And hopefully, we get out here again shortly when the cooler temperatures start kicking up. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay safe on the trails.